Dude, Andrew cannot help himself but be a complete prick. Like, I don't I don't think he can turn it off if he tried. Well, no, both can, can result in the expansion of humanity. Right, but <laughs> absolutely not. You're completely wrong. No, I'm, I'm completely right. Uh oh, Tim. You are wrong. Self-defense uh -oh, can result in expansion of humanity if you're using destruction for the purpose of ending something that is careful, destructive. Careful, Tim. I don't think you understand. We're talking about intrinsic behaviors. Ooh, that careful, Tim. Ooh, that's going to trigger Andrew. You don't understand? I don't understand what? I think that there is divine mandate that we must, you know, be fruitful, multiply. We are here to organize, to create. Where the f are your kids then, Tim? You're just being contrarian for no reason. No, it's not contrarian. <sighs> Andrew is never being invited on Tim Pool's show ever again. Boy, did he f this up. Friends, if you have a second or two, click like, comment down below. I would really appreciate it. Thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy the video. Why don't we start with Tim Pool debating Andrew Wilson? So this will be interesting to see. So Andrew Wilson, like he debated, was it Piers Morgan that was moderating them? Or was it Rob Nor maybe? Um, I think it was Rob Nor actually. Andrew Wilson debated Dave Smith like four months ago and just went full scorched earth, which to me was a little dubious. Like, why would you burn that bridge? If you're in, a, in the right wing space, I don't know why you would go scorched earth on Dave Smith. You know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see if he goes scorched earth on Tim or if he pulls punches. I think he's probably going to pull punches a little bit here. Let's get into it. Government enshrined protections are not real. Rights that we, as we know them, are just things that we recognize as things of value to us. So for example, for instance, I usually define it as simply, uh, you have a right to speak freely. If mm -hmm. you're in Kamala on Talk to a podcast, shut up. Are you with me or is she actually going to do that? I don't see anything about that, so I think you're lying. Oh, okay. In the middle of the woods and you're buck naked. You I mean, I, I, I legitimately think it would be a good idea because her podcast, laugh all you want, but she's crushing it, dude. You can say whatever you want. You have a right to keep and bear arms. Pick up a stick, sharpen it, pointy stick. You can defend. Does being so into politics not make you insanely angry all the time? Not all the time. Sometimes. 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 I, I'm a little bit better about consciously balancing my life out. Um, some days though, I'm in it. And yourself, ain't no one gonna stop you. The question is, when you get into conflict with someone else, where is that line drawn? So the reality is, rights are recognized as things that we can and must do to survive and, and maximize potential. I think rights are force, and I think that- You think it's rights government, are force? Government yeah, rights protections are What do you mean are rights, are, well, rights are force? You're talking about government protection. No, nope, I'm talking about period. I'll explain what I mean. A right to me is an entitlement absent duty. That's a right. Okay, you're entitled to it, but you have no duty. What, do you, what, do you, what does that mean? It yeah. means that you have it. So like, okay. An entitlement to speak. Yeah, so if you have a right to own a gun. To speak. No, hang on, let me let me finish. If you have a right. Dude, Andrew cannot help himself but be a, just a complete prick. Like, I don't I don't think he can turn it off if you tried. Right to own a gun. Do you have a duty to own a gun? What is it? But do you have a duty to speak? No, you don't we'll have a duty to speak. If you have a right oh. to vote, do you have a duty so to you, vote? The so, right. So, right. Well, that, that's, that's your argument. It's a, yeah, it's an entitlement. But, but absent a duty. But you can speak. Yeah, you can. And so until you can't, the, the, the question until somebody stops you with force. <laughs> so you're talking about government restrictions are made up by no, us as a people. Just people can can adhere to your rights without any form of government. If you're walking down the street and you speak, and a guy turns around and smacks you in the mouth and breaks your jaw, right? He has now used force uh -huh. against whatever this right you think you have to speak. You have no right to do. Except whatever you can enforce, right? Your mechanism is force, and the mechanism against you is force. And so, all rights are as force. You're talking about government protections, not rights. No, I'm talking. Well, the state isn't necessarily going to run up to someone and bust their jaw, preventing them from speaking in the future if they, for example, leave a threatening voicemail on someone's phone. Like they may show up and arrest you, or fine you, or give you some kind of a citation or something like that. But uh, you know, we're we're not in a Lord of the Flies situation here. I'm about rights. What is a right? If if we didn't have a recognized government and it was just sort of like an anarchic system of like disparate communities who govern themselves or whatever, then you know he would he would be onto something. But that's just not the world that we live in. So is it? It, it it is an intrinsic moral function well, okay. or intrinsic meaning what it means if uh, I'll, I'll, again i'll try to explain if you're yeah. born and you live in the middle of the woods there are things you can do you can hunt for food you can defend yourself you can speak freely now what we've done in the united states unless is you're we've... born blind and you can't talk right, right. Then, you, then, you, then where does your right to speak come from you lack the ability to speak right but, no one, but you still have the cap you still have the, the the means by which you are allowed to do it yeah but what makes it an intrinsic right to be able to do like where does this idea come from other than you axiomatically kind Evolution. of just say you say because I can do something after the. Uh, I think Tim used the word intrinsic maybe erroneously, or maybe he doesn't understand what the word means. But 
Uh, yeah, intrinsic means belonging naturally, essential. I mean, I guess the founders would would say that we had like an intrinsic right granted by God for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But when we're talking about like specific rights enumerated in the constitution, then these are obviously not intrinsic. The right to do something? It's part of it's it's part of a evolutionary biological structure so that resulted I, in the survival of humanity. So if I like grab a spear and I can <laughs> stab somebody with it, I have a right to? No, no, that's why that's, that's attacking that's somebody. That's that's violating. Yeah, but that's, but other that's than an bunch. axiom of you shouldn't do that because I just don't feel like you should. What makes it intrinsic that I don't do that? That you don't go and kill another person? Yeah. So the way I view rights would be things that uh, and, 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 and again, there's a debate over what what rights are. Yeah, let's start and, with and, that. What are they? No, no, no. So, so there, uh, it's, it's, it's honestly difficult to define, yeah. but it is certain moral structures or, uh, I would say axioms. Would you agree with that? Andrew doesn't know how to turn off his like debate bro shit, you know, like it, it, it's kind of funny because this is him sort of seeking to constrain himself a little bit, but it just pours out of him. He just cannot help himself. Like it'll come out at some point. Andrew's whole thing is like, he wants to hound somebody. He wants to humiliate someone. He wants to establish his intellectual dominance over someone. That is the number one thing that drives him. Uh, if you're even loosely familiar with his content, it's really obvious that that is what he just, he likes that fight and he, it's not just the fight. Like he wants to be like a cat playing with a mouse before he eats it. It's, it's like a, it's almost like an intellectual sadism is how I might describe it. He enjoys inflicting pain on the people that he has conversations with. And he's really in his element when he is discussing sort of philosophical concepts, esoteric phil philosophical concepts. Um, he's very well practiced in that sort of arena and most people are not. And so, you know, if he senses any kind of weakness, he'll try to pounce on that and just really stick the knife in and he can't turn it off. It would of course make a lot of sense for Andrew to tone it down a little bit with Tim. Tim has a massive platform. And so uh, someone like Andrew could could benefit greatly from Tim's platform. And Tim's not going to want to invite him back on again if he is like doing this like cat playing with the mouse thing with Tim. Uh, but he just can't turn it off. This is just like it is intrinsic within him huh? that he has to be super adver adversarial. Can't turn it off. With that, just an axiom. So like you have inalienable rights from God, according to the constitution. An axiom is like a foundational belief, right? Axiom definition. A statement of proposition, which is regarded as being established, accepted, or self evidently true. Um, the axiom that supply equals demand. Um, so I was, I was kind of close, right? This is an axiomatic principle. It means I, this is our like philosophical starting point is that we have these. I, I would put it as things that were required or, uh, uh, uh or greatly beneficial to the survival of an individual that we we greatly benefit i agree like, i agree it's, we it's, benefit i just don't know what makes them intrinsic or like you're born with them or something like this other than we just kind of agree to it so i think the restrictions we kind of agree to and some people might view some things as rights and other things not as rights mm -hmm. like the left thinks healthcare is a human right which makes literally no sense no sense but in terms of your ability to speak well, I, I think more accurately, the left believes that healthcare should be a human right. No different from a fire department or police, right? You can walk around, you can speak to defend yourself. You can pick up a stick, you can defend yeah, yourself. But this goes back to the same argument. You can, of, you can, I can grab a spear and murder somebody. I can do that. Why don't I have a right to do that? Because you are now causing harm to another person, which is a detriment. Yeah, but why is that valuable? Human, why is other, why so overall, other people so, valuable? Yeah, well, why, why would that be an intrinsic value? So, like, I can one, envision one would result planet, in the end of instance. humanity, and one results in the expansion of humanity. Well, no, both can can result in the expansion of humanity. Right, but <laughs> absolutely not. You're completely wrong. No, I'm, I'm completely right. Uh oh, Tim. you are wrong. Self defense uh -oh, can result in expansion of humanity if you are using destruction for the purpose of ending something that is Careful, destructive. Careful, Tim. Mm -hmm. But if you are wantonly going around murdering people, you're actively reducing and, and, and harming humanity. Uh, well, okay, but that doesn't mean so that doesn't, you couldn't uh, expand humanity by harming people. There's there's so the argument that do of self defense the is there are things that we believe we must be able to do for the betterment and survival of humanity. Yeah, but. But when I'm asking you this question, right, I'm asking the foundation from which you say, I have the right to speak, to speak or write. We or need to be able to, I mean, Tim, Tim was trying to say that, that through a system of rights, you know, such as like what we have in our constitution, it benefits society to the extent that society can progress and people can thrive more in a system with rights.
is what Tim is trying to say. Able Things to, like this. to survive. You, 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 because you need to do something, so the, I'm it, not it, sure how that means you have a right to it. And Andrew is just a full on, um, he calls himself a paleo, paleo that conservative. Is damning, that is a damning non answer. Andrew self identifies as a paleo conservative. He basically, from what I gather, I could be wrong. He basically believes that God's law through scripture should be the thing that determines how society functions. And it should determine our social and legal norms. Uh, scripture, you know, what is what is written in the Bible uh, should should be the thing that determines how we structure our society and government. He's uh, just a full on Christian nationalist to it, though. OK, so speech is not like you just have to eat. Words. Speech you have a is... right to eat. Yes, 100 percent. Really? You have a right to do that? Why? Why would you? Yes, not you don't have, have a right, right to own. To so if I have, you have a right to eat, otherwise you'll die. Yeah. Well, I don't understand. Do you have a right to breathe? What about breathing? Well, this is. A, these are good questions. Right? Again, again, I don't think you understand. We're talking about intrinsic behaviors. Ooh, that careful, Tim. Ooh, that's gonna trigger Andrew. You don't understand. I don't understand what that are required for survival mm -hmm. versus the government and humans deciding what. November, did I get you for six months? Appreciate it, Bob. We shouldn't have. I don't laws. think we're speaking past each other. I'm asking what makes them intrinsic. When you say I have a right to eat. Okay. If you don't, you'll die. If you have no, if, if that guy has all the food over there, you uh -huh. no longer have a right to eat. We are not talking Jesus about your right to steal from others. If you are standing in the woods by yourself, if you are standing in the woods by yourself, eat that mushroom. Okay, got it. You can eat the mushroom. Uh huh. But what makes it a right to eat that mushroom, and what makes it not a right for guy standing next to the mushroom? I'm kind of with Andrew on this one. I understand what he's saying. To say, okay, I have a gun, about laws. and I don't want okay, you to wait, eat on. that mushroom. You're now once again talking about laws and restrictions. Yeah. Okay. But my whole my whole theory is that rights themselves are force, and that's all they ever are. It's just your ability to use force to do thing you want to do. I think you're just making you call that a right. I, I call rights things that are uh, essential to the survival of humanity. Do so you have a right to your heart beating and your blood flowing and to blink and to yes? Okay. So if you so just now you misunderstand because once again you're talking about government again. How is this government? It doesn't okay. need to be government. If you are standing in the middle of the woods and your heart is beating, mm -hmm. your be heart has a right to beat. If your heart fails and you die, you died. What we, if you're, you're, what you're making an argument that someone should or should not be allowed to do something is an entirely a human social construct. I agree. Right. I'm saying that the reason we have protections of rights mm -hmm. is because has Andrew even established that like this force, uh, you know, the 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 force of these or the force that. Um, comes with these rights is bad has he has he even come out and said that it's good or bad we've determined certain things are required required for the reasonable survival and expansion of humanity now, i agree things, we agree to those things and we act as though they're right and the bill of rights but i don't think rights themselves is, exist the bill of rights is a recognition of certain things that we do for the betterment of survival that must be protected what a silly position constitutional rights don't exist of course they exist in practice. If you murder someone, or, or, or not even just constitutional rights, but laws as well, like if you murder someone, you will, and you're caught, you will be put on trial. And if you're found guilty, you will be punished. And, and you can't just like walk away from that. Protected from government. Now, if you wanna argue the amendments in the bill- Andrew kind of reminds me of the, uh, what are they called? Sovereign citizens. I used to think those videos were so funny and now I find those people so insufferable. It's easy to go down a sovereign citizen rabbit hole on YouTube, or it's just compilations of people where if they're going through some kind of a checkpoint, some kind of police checkpoint or something like that, and then the person asks to see their ID and they just say, nope. And they claim that they're not a citizen of the United States, they're a sovereign citizen. And then eventually the cop just like lets them go because he doesn't want to turn it into a big thing. Of rights are nonsensical. Fine. If you want to have a moral argument or philosophical argument about what is required or intrinsic to the survival of humanity, by all means have that argument. But rights do exist. It just means some you might not agree with and some you might think aren't. Those are those are philosophical debates. Yeah, but the, it's not a legal argument, but a moral philosophical argument. Like, I don't think Andrew thinks that there are human rights. Well, we determine what human rights are. So he may be right that there is no like I, you know, I don't necessarily disagree in terms of there are things that we are just intrinsically entitled to uh, human beings at some step in our evolution. When we started conceiving of a system like democracy through consensus and through iteration and, and revolution and these kinds of things, we've established these social systems they exist you, you know you can pretend like they don't exist but they do um i don't know how you can say that they're not real they're real in their consequences when you say exist right when do you mean outside of your brain they exist or do they only exist as a construction of your mind where you say i have a right to do x if we observe creatures in the wild we will see them required to do things to survive
Yeah. Okay. So if you inhibit those things, they will die. So if just if just right to you, those things. So the rights to you just mean things which are a requirement for your existence. And and typically we define them as such because they they transcend the basic obvious things like breathing and drinking water. Well, owning a gun isn't a requirement to your existence. No, defending yourself is. Yeah, but you, if a bear. See now, Andrew's right here. Like Tim's definition is kind of stupid. You don't necessarily need a gun. You can craft a spear. You can learn martial arts, et cetera, et cetera. Comes near the middle of the woods. This idea that you have like a God-given right or an intrinsic right to own a firearm is a, is a bit silly and you don't have the ability to defend yourself, you cease to exist and humans cease to exist. So humans do defend themselves. Then as human society, we've yeah. decided this should be protected. Otherwise, humans will cease to exist. Yeah, but why? Okay, but this makes no sense, right? So if, Certainly if, does. if all right is... <laughs> I don't think the... I don't think the... Um, I don't think the like foundational principle of the Second Amendment is that we won't be able to exist it's without right. guns. Like, I don't, I don't think that's what it's there for. ...to you, Tim, is... Thing, thing X, which is necessary for the survival of a man, in this case, blinking and breathing and eating and, you know, pooping and whatever you have the right to poop shall not be under, you know, because you have a right to do that because it's like something you need to do to be alive. Right. But okay? you can't poop on someone's floor. Why couldn't you extend that to literally everything? You need health care to survive. You need, you need, yep. you need guns you to survive. Right to you need access. a house to survive. You so need everything. Again. Damn, see, Andrew's actually popping off here. ...to survive. I, I, I think we should move on, but I think the okay. challenge is, I don't know if you're unwilling to understand or what... You have no right to take other, thi other things from other people, mm -hmm. to take their... Oh, Tim. Oh, Tim. I gotta say, I think, I, think, I think Tim is failing to understand what this argument is all about. ...labor. You have no right to force a doctor to perform surgery on you, but you certainly have a right to ask him for it. Those are just assertions. Like, you just assert these things as though really? they have a grounding epistemic foundation from which you can make the assertion. Based on where do you make the assertion that you're not allowed to do X other than because Tim Pool's preference is that you don't? And I'm literally saying you're talking about laws and social and, and social order right now, not human behaviors for survival. I think human behaviors are laws and social orders. I think that's this. You're saying the same thing. No, if a person was in the middle of the woods, they'd be foraging and looking for food. Yeah. It's, what does that have to do with what I just said? You're talking, you're talking about, about, about human can and can't do. I'm talking about what humans need to do to survive. Yeah. OK, well, humans also have to have other you humans need, around to survive. Need, and so this is communication is essential. The right to defend uh -huh. yourself is essential. The yeah. right to secure your possessions is essential. Mm -hmm. These things. Andrew is never being invited on Tim Pool's show ever again. Boy, did he f*** this up. Without them, humans cease to function properly. And then you get the Soviet bloc, you get starvation, you get genocides. It's and this is a detriment a, it's to... It's a function of our belief system in the United States that we have natural rights. I mean... I agree with that. That's a huge part I of it. I agree with that. I agree with that, that in the United States, we agree... That but we I think have that them. You can say, I think you can not say sure that, everyone, that we do. I think that you can say that everyone has these rights, and it's a function of whether or not their government allows the rights to be recognized. That's the contention. Yes. So, when you say, I think everybody has these rights. Yeah, I, that is my belief. Yeah, it's, your, it's, a, it's a belief. Yeah. Based on. It's not a belief that people have constitutional rights in America. I don't, I don't understand this argument, bro. This is just, this is one of those arguments where it just feels like an argument for the sake of argument, you know? Based on ex Like, what are we getting at? Existence, I mean, based, yeah, based on, on just you know, your, your preferences. So there's, it's, I don't think in it's the, a in the, in the big, I think everyone has a right to breathe. And, in the, like, and, and, and you do. And in, the, in the big picture of what are the list of fundamental rights that exist to humans, cultures debate these things wildly, but there are a small handful which are true and correct. Mm -hmm. If inhibited, a person dies. Agreed. But what I'm saying, I guess my, my overarching point, and I can just kind of tie or it off society with fails. This, is that when I say rights are force, what I'm saying is the thing that you say, you believe you have the right now, but if aliens invaded, you couldn't enforce it. So it's not real. No, I think like, I mean, you're right. If there was some cataclysmic event, if there was a massive comet or right. aliens invaded or all of our infrastructure collapsed and we no longer had energy sources and society devolved into uh, anarchic uh, communities, disparate communities all over the world, then all of these rights obviously go away and they disappear. But that doesn't mean that they're not real now. Something can be a construct and still be real. Um, uh, I agree with what he's saying that these rights are not like many of these rights, or if not all of these rights, they're not intrinsic. It's a social con construct. We all agree to abide by these rules. And if you don't, then you suffer some sort of punishment, whether it be 
social ostracization how do you how are you, social st being socially stigmatized or ostracized or you could suffer some legal ramification you end up in jail you pay a fine you got to go to court etc cetera, etc cetera. maybe you can't drive anymore um so they're real in their consequences is what i'm saying a is necessary breathing eating these types of things i think that those things which you call rights really are just force you're saying i will use force in order to do this thing that i want to do to necessarily exist and that another person can use force to stop those things from existing. And then if, you can use force to stop them. Right, and then you can use force, et cetera, et cetera. Right but all we're really doing is just moving the goalpost to force around, right? So if this group says, this group does not have the right to breathe, they do not have the right to eat, they do not have the right to do any of this shit, and they go and put a stop to it, but you don't, what but are we group, appealing to for why it is that you can't do that? That group doesn't have the right. Laws, the Constitution, right? Right to do yeah, that. Yeah, but that's the that makes no sense. Like Why wouldn't saying, they have the right saying, to do that? <laughs> I feel, saying, I feel you're like saying might makes right, which is well, it might be on that. He is so standoffish, bro. My God. I think you're making it a makes. post a postmodernist argument for why you should be allowed to do things that other people don't want you to do. I think you. Well, no, I think the opposite is true. I'm making. I'm making. I would use a justification of God. And I would, I would appeal to something which is unchanging and an there unchanging standard for moral justifications there for odds. But what, what you're doing, when there you say is. a right and you're appealing to like the Constitution, that's postmodernist subjective standards of nonsense, right? It's just like no, it's moral we foundation. all decided that we have these rights. Oh, so God, don't let them suck you into an ar argument about moral uh, philosophies. So we do. There's no, there's no justification for any of them. So Zero. you don't believe in any intrinsic moral foundations? No, I do believe. No, he does. He, he, but he believes that it comes from scripture and scripture alone. And intrinsic moral foundations and epistemic justifications and ontological justifications. Or more specifically, he believes it comes from God. Justifications which would come from God. These I think you're doing a, deconstructivist reasoning to argue why. It's just basic people. philosophy. It has nothing to do with deconstruction or postmodernism. Basic philosophy, you have to have a justification for a position. And when so, I've given you one, you just reject you know, it every yeah, time. Well, you because, say, nope, because nope. they're axiomatic. So you haven't, you haven't demonstrated why the axiom or the starting point, we start with rights, Andrew. You haven't demonstrated why we do other than you because die. I observe that if we don't act in this way, you expire. But it's like, okay, but why is that even bad? Like, why is that even a bad thing? Why is it bad that humans cease to exist? Yeah, why would that even be a bad thing from the worldview of rights? Bad. Like, oh, okay, uh, if you don't have this right, you die. But you haven't justified why that's even a bad thing. Because humans exist through a pattern of evolution towards, or, or creation, whichever you mm -hmm. decide, for uh, to uh, be fruitful. To bear fruit. I don't know why the two needs to be mutually exclusive. Like, I don't know why people who, like, I'm talking about, like, anti-evolution folks, I don't know why they feel like evolution doesn't correspond with a, a sort of natural order or, like, a god. Like, if god existed, I don't know why evolu evolution can't be, can't fit within that framework. Fruit and etc. These things are components of creation and life. I think this aligns perfectly with like a Christian, Judeo-Christian moral worldview. And I think these things are requirements for the efficient expansion and fruitfulness of humans. So they are natural, either from an evolutionary standpoint, humans That's developed right. to, to, inhi inhibit cert, uh, to in inherit certain requirements. This will says that evolution doesn't cor can't correspond with God in their worldview because evolution corrupts their worldview, that God loves them and only them as the chosen few who will be saved per their dogmatic teachings. They don't like the thought that they were potentially just a fluke of nature and not specifically created to be God's children. That's of course true. I understand what you're saying there. I'm, I'm just saying if you, if you thought about it, if you really thought about it, God constructing the natural world to allow for Darwinistic evolution is still an incredible, miraculous creation. You know what I mean? So in my mind, it doesn't necessarily have to be mutually exclusive, but I understand that argument that you're making. They get really upset if you tell them that we evolved from apes because in the scriptures, it says that God was granted dominion over the land and the seas and all the animals and the creatures are supposed to be subservient to man. Uh, we have every right to, to dominate uh, nature, uh, dominate lesser beings because God said so, that sort of a thing. Requirements to function efficiently and when these things are curtailed, we see inefficiency and collapse, disease and chaos. This is circular. So you go, you go, OK, we need to we need to uh, bear fruit and multiply. Why? Well, because then we can exist. God why do we so. need to exist? Because then we can bear fruit and multiply. OK, but why? Because then we can okay, exist. You're, 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 you're just being contrarian for no reason. No, it's not contrarian. <laughs> 
He, dude, I feel like Andrew is smart enough that I feel like Andrew is for sure inhibiting himself or inhibiting his growth on social media. He just cannot help but alienate himself from people. Like him just going full scorched earth on Tim Pool and Dave Smith, who are two of, I mean, Tim Pool and Dave Smith in terms of social media pundits. And I'll throw Dave Smith in with the conservatives. I realize that he self-identifies as libertarian, but let's just throw him in the bucket of conservatives. Dave Smith and, D and Tim Pool are, are both in the top 10 at this point, right? So he could build a bridge there and it would lead to a lot of social media growth, but he just loves arguing. He could he could also like adjust his his approach to one of educating people rather than trying to make people feel stupid and trying to make himself look super super smart to his like legion of incel followers. He could easily he could just as easily like make his arguments in the form of questions and sort of like lead Tim gently by asking him various questions and then maybe that could lead to like Tim being like, "Wow, I never really thought of it that way." But because he takes this aggressive posture, it just it just automatically for most people, it'll put you on the defensive and it just you feel like you're being attacked because you are. You know what I mean? And I, this is where I think it's just delusional. Like, I think Andrew's a smart guy. Uh, he's insufferable in many ways, but he's he's for sure a smart guy. But I think Andrew has delusionally convinced himself that he will win in the marketplace of ideas and this extremist sort of framework of Christian nationalism can succeed. I think he genuinely believes that he, he, he is playing an essential role in moving this country or maybe humanity broadly away from these like man-made rights or these man, these, 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 um, constitutionally granted rights. And then into like a, a new system of community and society that is structured around like the Bible. I feel like he genuinely believes that this is possible. And when you look at belief in God, when you look at Gallup polls that have been that have been tracking society's, you know, belief in God, like what percentage of people, have, you know, for, for what percentage of people does a close relationship with God have a lot of importance for them? I think I said that in a kind of convoluted way or whatever, but basically belief in God has been trending down. It was back in the 90s when I was growing up. It, it was like 98% of the country believed in God and over, I mean, and, and that sounds kind of crazy now because these days it's not terribly difficult to find atheists, people that are open with their atheism. But for decades and centuries, not just in this country, the concept of atheism was really niche. And we're at a, we're at a point now where I think it's like uh, trending below 80% now, which is, you know, that is a enormous drop just in the last 25 years to go from 98% of people believing, believing in God to 80% of people believing in God. That is a precipitous drop. I don't know where it's going to level off because I think you're always going to have a certain percentage of the population that believe in some sort of a higher power. Um, so I don't know where that's going to level off or whatever. I don't think it's just going to keep going down to zero. But when I brought this up with Andrew in the horrible conversation I had with him, he just chose not to believe it. He was just like, well, you show me the poll. I don't, I don't know what poll you're talking about. I don't know if he was pretending to not know that belief in God is trending down or if he uh, just, or just didn't know. He will, he, he and his movement that he's trying to represent will fail. Let's just, we're never going to go back to that. We're never going to go back to that. It's just, it isn't going to happen. I'm giving you a real you principle. believe in God? Yeah, I'm a Christian. So if I'm I say God gives you a mandate, Christian. so when God says has a mandate to be fruitful and multiply, do you say yes or no? Yo, of course. Are there certain characteristics and behaviors that result in benefit and in more efficient, fruitful multiplying? Of course. Aren't the, so are that's those, divine, that's, but this is, hang on, this is divine command, justification from divine command, it has nothing to do with libertarian nonsense of cost, constitutional I egalitarianism. Got, I think instead of having a discussion on the merits of what rights might mean, you're, in, you're instead upset over what libertarians think rights might mean as opposed to what I'm actually trying to say. Okay, well, do you justify rights as coming from God? Yes. Okay, great. Well, then we're fine there. I don't. But so I think we actually agree. So I feel like Tim kind of backed himself into a corner here because if you believe that rights come from God and if Tim cl claims to be Christian, then he would necessarily have to go along with Andrew's whole worldview. Like if you truly believe that, you know, these, these, these rights are handed down by this like Christian God, then should we not? codify the Bible? Would it not logically follow that we should codify the Bible, which bucks, which is of course like totally contradictory to Tim's sort of like vaguely libertarian kind of perspective. So then if that is the case, if whatever you think rights are come from God, 
then whatever else we're appealing to external to God for where a right comes from isn't really a right, right? It's not really a right. I think that uh, life, goodness, creation, there is a deep overlap. I think a simple way to look at it is, you know, yin yang within good, there is some evil within evil, there is some, some good. Mm -hmm. And uh, a way to explain that is sometimes we have to destroy to create. What does that mean? If there's a mass murderer who's murdering children, we unfortunately, we don't want to, but we stop that person to defend ourselves and others' lives. I think that there is divine mandate that we, we must, you know, be fruitful, multiply. We are here to organize, to create. Where the f are your kids then, Tim? Why aren't you having kids, Tim? Shouldn't you have... How old is Tim? He should have like 15 babies by now. He's 38 years old. Are you kidding me? He literally, like, he literally should have like 15 kids by now. There's a secular way of looking. If he believes that he has a mandate from God to be fruitful and multiply, why has he not in practice prioritized finding a mate and creating children? Like, I don't, you know, explain that. Or is this, is this a new development for him and in his, in his philosophy? Looking at it, it's evolution that developed us to this point where we have, in, we have internalized these things that we must do or that result in a more efficient way of life. Or more simply, mm -hmm. there is a God, there is a divine structure yep. and mandate which results in certain things that are beneficial to mankind that I would describe as good and just, and there are things that are evil and unjust. So as we get to the heart of it then, right here, where we come to this agreement, where I reject this is that I think all the things you just stated are duties. They're duties, they're the opposite of rights. You have a duty. I just think we're having a semantic argument. Well, but semantics are super important when, so we don't speak past each other. So when I say a duty, it's an obligation to do a thing based on the fact that you're commanded to, in this case by God. A right, I would say, is an entitlement absent duty. So oh, we should absolutely watch this classic Tim Pool. But I do think it's crazy that I'm about to be 34 and I have no family. Because my, my dad had two kids by the time he was 27. Yeah. And I'm like, man, you know what, you know what the problem is, though? It's definitely not me. Mm -hmm. I think it's everybody else. Oh my God. Oh, it never gets old. It never gets old. That clip never gets old because he's being 1000% sincere. He's not being ironic like that. He legitimately believes that. That clip never gets old. It's one of the most incredible clips, dude. If that's the case, you're, what you're listing out is like, God is giving us these duties to do. I'm not sure what rights he's giving you. I'm saying there are certain behaviors that God, that there, there, there are certain behaviors, there are certain uh, uh, functions of life that are a component of God's divine plan mandate. And that's a, that's a there's a, I could argue it in a secular way for people who don't believe in God or whatever. Sure. There's a natural structure of the universe that's, that says to humans, be fruitful and multiply. And these things are important for the efficient structure of such. Thanks for watching this clip from Tim Cast. I think Tim Pool. I think Tim Pool lost that debate.